All right, guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to American Truck Simulator. You do not see anything that shows that we are in American Truck Simulator because we are not driving today. We're not reviewing any trucks, trailers, engines. It's not even about news. Today, as you guessed from the title, it's all about the first tutorial on how to get set up with a twin stick system. So right off the bat, let me go over what this video is for and what it is not for. This video is to give you a walkthrough tutorial on everything that you need to get set up and accomplish having a twin stick set up with some transmission. I have picked the transmission for today and all of the files that go along with it correspond to it. We're going to be doing a Spicer 4.4. That means four gears in the main transmission and four gears in the auxiliary transmission for a total of four times four, 16 total forward gears, but it also has four reverse gears. That's what we're going over today. By the end, you should have a working 4-4 transmission. And what I'm not going to go over today is kind of an in-depth look into each file because that would take a while. I know that that is probably interesting to a few of you out there who want to adapt these, who want to build more transmissions, put in a Spicer 5.4, a Spicer 5.3, maybe a twin stick Mac. We will get into these in other tutorials where we dive into the files and I explain line by line what everything means, how everything matches up. So if you're going to adapt it to make sure to go one by one down the line and basically a series of checks, but it's not about creating your own at this point. This one is for the Spicer 4.4 and all of the th stuff that you need to know to get started. It is rather in depth. So a couple things up front. Number one, you'll see the first link down in the description is a link to all of the resources that you will need to get this accomplished. I have provided many of them for you. So it'll be there for you. Go ahead right now, go to that link down in the description. It's the first link and download all of the stuff. Don't install anything. Don't copy anything to anywhere. I'll tell you when and where to do that, but go ahead and download it now. So you have all of the materials ready and at hand. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is because this is kind of an in-depth in uh, tutorial, there are a lot of steps and it's very important to cover them in a certain order so that you guys understand it. I want to make it as easy and clear as possible. There are timestamps down below, quite a bit, quite a few of them, right? It's pretty in depth. And that's for two reasons. Number one, if you come back to this tutorial later and say, oh, what was that part that he was talking about changing the file name? You can go straight to it from that. Also, I'm going so in depth, this is going to help practically anyone, even if they're new to ATS. So with that in mind, for those pros out there, those veterans who already know how to do some of these things, I'll prompt you at certain points to say, if you already know how to do this, just go ahead and take a look at the timestamps down below in the description so you can skip ahead to the next part. Maybe only 30 minutes of this is going to be relevant to you or 20 minutes or something. For those who want the step-by-step -step walkthrough and maybe even just some confirmation of, okay, that's, what I th that's how I thought you did it. That is why it's so in-depth. The last thing I want to mention is this is specifically for the Spicer 4.4. The files that we're working with are specifically for the shift pattern that I'm going to teach you and for the transmission that we're building. Please follow step-by-step. -step. Again, later is when you can make changes and adapt to make it your own for the sake of completion and having success with this. Follow the steps step-by-step. All right, so now we know more or less what this video is and what this video is not. Let's go ahead and get into it. I do have in that link that you've just downloaded, there are a couple resources. One of them is gonna be a link to a mod. One of them is a gearbox layout file that you're going to just simply move into a folder. I'll explain that. Um, the other one is some code that we're gonna have to copy and paste. That's the portion that's going to be a little bit 
I don't know. It's not difficult. It's not complex. You just want to pay attention. And I do have um, a helpful chart for you to fill out ahead of time so that going in and pasting the code is going to be easier. That's also a step that I can't write for you. It's unique to how the game has assigned your shifter and each one of the positions. So if, if you see in the lower right-hand corner, you see my two shifters here. For some that position is button 12. For some, that is position is button three. It's going to be unique to you. I'll show you how to figure it out for yourself and your own setup, but that's basically what we're doing. Um, the gearbox layout file is provided for you. The transmission file will be able to get pretty, pretty easily. Um, the hardest part is going to be the controls file that we're manipulating within the profile that you want to do this. I, we're going to go ahead and get started with that part because once we're done with that, everything else is super easy. So what do we do? Let me just go ahead and start off with the hardware. Do I need to say it? This is a twin stick system. You need two sticks. You just do. I'm sorry. If you don't have two sticks, or you want to do it in the future, this video is not going to be useful for you until you have the two sticks. Here's my first stick, here's my second stick, and my two shifter bases. I have it already installed. It's recognized by the game. Everything's set up. They're fully functional. You need to make sure that you're at that point. For those that have this set up, go ahead and skip to the next section. For those of you that do not have this set up yet, one little, one little uh, tidbit that's going to help you. I am on Logitech. You might be on Thrustmaster, Fanatec, any other system. The way my system works, when I bought my first shifter, this one on the left, the shifter base down here, I bought it with the wheel and the pedals. And the way Logitech works is you plug the pedals and the stick into the steering wheel into the back of it. So it's a different type of, uh, it's a different type of, it's not like a USB plug-in. It's more of a, of a larger rectangle. I think it's for the Logitech, I believe it's called a DB9, I think. I have to look that up. Yeah, I think it's called a DB9. And basically what is going on here is when I get my second shifter base, see for this one, I plug into my steering wheel. For this one, I don't have any more spots. It's only meant for one shifter. So I'm going to have to input this second one, this base, USB into my computer. And in order to do that, you might need an adapter. So do a little bit of research ahead of time so that you can find out if there are any adapters that are necessary for you to run USB into your computer. Your shifter base might not come that way because it may have been intended to be plugged in to your wheel. You already have one plugged in. You can't plug a second one in. So make sure you have that adapter for USB. All right. That is the hardware. You need two sticks. Make sure you have the adapter if you need it. Now we're pretty much going to jump right into the files. So most of the stuff that we're going to be doing is within this controls.sii file. I'll show you that in a second. Basic rundown on what a two stick transmission like a Spicer does, how it works. Me explaining this to you is going to help when we're putting in the variables and it'll also help us lay out some really key terms. All right. So if you look at the two sticks in the bottom right hand corner, this is my main transmission. It has four gears. It's a Spicer 4.4. Four gears in the main four gears in the auxiliary. I shift one, I shift two, I shift three, and I shift four. And the same pattern has been set up on the auxiliary. The way a main and auxiliary work, think about an 18 speed. For your low and one through eight gears, you have a low and a high version of each gear and you access that through a splitter. There are no splitters on a traditional two stick setup. And instead of being able to just split between low and high or to do two splits, 
we can split each gear four times. If I have this stick upper left, I am in first gear in my main. But that's not really a gear by itself. You need to be in gear with your auxiliary. So if I take this and go upper left, I am now in one in my main and one in my auxiliary. I call that one one. I know, pretty creative, right? But I don't, I can split first gear four times. I can go one, 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 two, one, three, and one, four. Now I'm out of auxiliary gears, and now I have to go on to my next main gear. Second in the main, but I also don't want to start in two, four. I want to reset my auxiliary to first. Now I've got my four variations of second by changing the auxiliary. First, second, so this will be two, one, two, 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 three, two, four. Then I go to my third main and I reset my auxiliary to first. Now I'm in three, one, three, two, three, 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 four. And then finally I go to my fourth main, reset my auxiliary to first, and second, and third, and fourth, and I end up in four, four. That is how this entire pattern is going to work. That is how the, the transmission is set up, and we are going to make it like that. So the first thing that I want you to do before we go into the coating, pick a truck that you are going to be using for this example. What truck do you want to put this 4.4 Spicer transmission into? And I say that for two reasons. Number one, you are going to need to know the truck name. Now let me give you an example of how to do that. If I go into a truck here, let's just go into the Peterbilt 359 by FLX. Now, normally you would go into the file in your mod folder. So I'm in American Truck Simulator and mod. If I come over here, and I double click to try to get more information on it, it doesn't allow me to go into it. It's locked. That's okay because I also have a def file. A lot of trucks that you buy or download will have a def file. If they don't, sometimes you can gain access to it simply by having a skin pack attached to it or some sort of accessory that some developer has used specifically for that truck. You can use that to enter. And the way you get the name is the same every time. Open up the def file or whatever skin file or whatever. And you want to go into these three folders, def, vehicle, truck. It's always like that def vehicle truck. Whenever you're assigning a truck to an engine or a truck to a transmission. And then we see right here in this folder, that is the truck name. Go ahead and copy that, whatever that truck that you have decided, copy it, put it in um, a note file right now. We will be using it later on. Now, the second reason why I asked you to pick a truck is to kind of save you a step. What we're doing when we go in and manipulate the controls.sii file, which I'll show you in a second, it is at a profile level. What that means is you could have 10 different profiles but you're only going to assign your specific controls file to maybe one profile. Pick the truck that you're gonna use and then figure out what profile that's in. It just makes sense, it'll save you a step. If you know you want it in, for example, the 359 uh, by FLX, perfect. Figure out where that truck is installed and we'll begin by identifying what profile that is. If you already know how to identify what profile you're working in, go ahead and skip to the next step. For those of you that don't, this is how you do it. We're going to go into ATS here. I'm going to select the profile that I want. It's this one. Okay, once this opens up, and I'm in the profile for that has the truck that I want to use. I want you to just go to save and load. Save the current game. And put it in any name. Um, 
tutorial test and save it. Now we don't need the saved file, but we will use it in the next step. Go ahead and exit. All right, so what we needed to do here essentially was we needed to take action, some sort of action on this profile so that when we go into our American Truck Simulator fo uh, folder and we go into profiles, you might know what profile is what when you're in the game, but the game lists all your profiles like this. And it's not abundantly clear which profile you should be working with. The good news is, if you look at this, I've already done this and I've modified my dates. This is by oldest first, and this is by the latest. You can tell by the date. I'm recording this on the 23rd, so a little bit before you get this. It is the latest profile. It's what I just did. If you look, um, my it's actually 246 right now, and I made this change at 245, so I know I'm in the right profile. I take action on it so that I can arrange it by date and identify that the one I was in is actually this one. If you want, pro tip, write this down right now so that you can always identify this long string of numbers with the profile that you're familiar with. So once we found our profile, we know our truck that we want to use is already built in there. You don't have to build it again after this step. We'll go into that and our first thing is we're going to be changing this controls file. This is set up you may not have ever gone into the controls file and you really don't need to. It's set up for a single stick setup. And you make all of your changes and assignments within the actual game settings in the control settings. But for now, adding two sticks makes it more complex so we're gonna have to adapt this. Before we get into that, go ahead and take this controls file, copy it. We wanna make a backup copy because we're about to make changes and we do not want to lose our original file. So make a backup copy. Go ahead and copy this folder or copy this file and move it somewhere else on your computer where you can remember where it is, where you can find it so that you have reference to it. What I have actually done is I've created a folder called modified files and I have all of my, con uh, all of my controls files in here, including a folder called original controls within profile because we're doing it within a specific profile. And when I open that up, boom, there's my controls files. If anything goes wrong, or if I want to revert back to a single stick use in this profile, I would simply copy this file, go back into American truck simulator, go into my profiles. This is the one I was using last, open it up and I would paste it in and it would ask me if I want to replace. I am, in this case, I would be overriding this controls file. Now, I already, and I keep all of my controls files there, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we're set for this tutorial. Um, I've already saved this Spicer 4.4 controls file, which is what we're gonna be doing here. So I'm gonna open it up. I'm going to copy it, because now I want to make use of it. And I'm going to put it back, American Truck Simulator, profiles this is the profile I was using and I'm going to paste it in it's asking me if I want to replace it and I do perfect this profile now has a controls file that will give me a Spicer 4.4 setup you will need in the future different control files if you want to do a 4.3 a 5.3 a 5.4 a twin stick Mac a six speed anything that you want or Again, revert to the original if you just want to operate it with a single stick. But that's the kind of unique and quirky thing about this. It's at the profile level. It is within your profiles. So this change that I'm making, I have four other profiles. None of them are affected by this. This only applies to this profile. So let's go in to the controls files now. This is the controls.sii file. And we're going to scroll down pretty much to the end of it until we get to a portion that's, that shows this. 
we're looking for mix gear one through mix gear 16. This is where we are going to assign all of our positions on our sticks. Every time you move your stick to a certain position, the game recognizes it because it there is within the shifter base a button. So we need to figure out right here what is the name of the shifter that it's that it identifies this as and what is the button in this position? What is the button in this position? What is the button in this position? So before we even touch anything in here, I want to refer you to the download, uh, the uh, link with all the downloads. If you open it up, you're going to have something that says ATS button identification, everyone. Go ahead and open that. And essentially what's going on here is I want you to go into the game and find out what this assignment is. This is a button. This is a button. This is a button. Over here, this is a button. Also, you have a name for your shifter base. That's this base here down below. The game assigns it a random name. It's either going to be Joy, Joy 1, Joy 2, Joy 3. Obviously, we have two different shifter bases here. So we're going to have two different names. We also want to identify what our range selector is and the splitter is, both the name and the button. That's important because the shifter base is one thing. The actual knob on top is a separate device. You know this because you have to plug it in separate um, into, as a USB. So it is going to have a different name and the range selector and the splitter on the side is going to have its own unique buttons. We need to figure out how to do that. If you already know how to do that, go ahead and fill this out. I highly, highly recommend printing this out. It will help you so much, um, not only for this tutorial, but in the future. Once we start getting into the button assignments, things can get a little confusing if you do not have this on hand and while you're going between different windows and files, just print it out and have it in hand. If you do not have access to a printer, get a sheet of paper, go grab a sheet of paper, and just copy this down right here so that you can essentially put on the paper what I've put here on the screen. If you already know how to assign this, go ahead to the next step. If you do not know how to do this, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The way that you find these assignments is actually within the game. So let's go back into ATS. Okay, so without even going into that profile and even going into the game, you can go into the settings. Now what we want to go into is keys and buttons. What I want to do is normally this is where you would assign some sort of additional hardware or a key to be bound to an action. For example, right here it says shift up, like with your shifter, and you do that by hitting the shift key. I want to use this button. I'm not going to reassign it. I want it to still say shift at the end of what we're doing. And you can pretty much click on any of these to do this. But make a note what it's assigned to. It's assigned to shift for shift up. And we're going to use this to kind of borrow for a second to figure out. Now, what you normally do when you assign it is you click the button and then you do some sort of action with your hardware. In this case, we need to figure out what the top left is on our first stick. So top left, I need to figure out two things. How is it identified this shifter base? What's the name? Is it Joy? Joy 1, Joy 2? And also, what is this button? So I'm going to put my stick in neutral. I'm going to click the button as if I'm assigning it. And now I'm going to move my stick to the upper left. And we can move it back to neutral. And we see here, it has identified this entire shifter base as joy. So when you go over to your uh, chart that I have for you, you want to make a note at the bottom. So this is my left stick. So it's the stick on the left where it says at the bottom name of shifter base, I would put in joy. Now, obviously the stick on the right, it's going to be identified as a different device. It might be joy two or joy three. 
also take note that when I move my stick to the upper left-hand portion, the upper left-hand position, it identifies this as button 12. Okay, so let's say I want to know what it's going to be like to be in this position, bottom left, right? So stick in neutral, let's press the button again, and we'll move our stick there. And there we go, it is joy button 13, right? So for me, uh, notice how it's still joy. It's all, whenever I'm working with the stick, it's based on what the shifter base is. So they're all gonna say joy. It's not gonna change until I move over to my second shifter. But this one is button 13. So for me, I would have 12 here and I would have 13 here. Now for my case, spoiler alert, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So I know what that is going to be. By the way, when you go to do this for your second stick, the second shifter base will have different buttons. I don't know why. For mine, I believe it starts at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. That's the way mine works. It assigned that for me. Um, but before we go on to the second stick, and before you go on to fill in these other positions, we need to figure out what the range and splitter, both the button name or both the shift, the device name, is it going to be Joy 3, Joy 4, and also the button for that. Just to be clear, I'll kind of rotate this over. The range is this one here in the front that can be either in a down or an up position. The splitter is here on the side that can be moved front and back. So let's go ahead and start with the range and we're going to do the same thing with an ATS. So let's go ahead and use the same thing just to experiment. I'm going to click on the button and I'm going to move the range knob up and down. Right? So now we have Joy 3. That's how it that's the shifter knob on top is now Joy 3. So write that down in your chart, Joy 3, and this button for the range is button 1. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the splitter. I'm going to click the button again, see what it assigns it, and I'm going to move the splitter forward and move it back. Still Joy 3, obviously that makes sense. It's the same device, but my splitter is button 0. Go ahead and write that down. At this point, you should have everything for the first one. The name of it, uh, all of the buttons assigned to these six positions. You should have the name and button of the range, the name and the button of the splitter. Go ahead at this point and fill in this whole second one using the same method that I just showed you. Once this is complete, everything will fall into place and make a lot more sense. Okay, now we're back into the controls section, and now it's going to make a lot more sense what we're doing here. Just a little side note here, we were just in the game to find our button positions, if that's what you just saw. Make sure your game is completely closed when you do this. You can't be making changes to a main file here when your game is already open. So we're going to be dealing with these mixed gears, 1 through 16. I'm going to give you some code, and it's going to look very similar to this in terms of the... Uh, in terms of the syntax, in terms of how they have it coded. What you're going to be doing is referring to your chart to identify what your first shifter, your main shifter, what it's called. Notice how from top to bottom it says joy. This second one though is for my second shifter, is for my second shifter and it's labeled joy 2. And then these are the buttons for all of our positions. Now think about this. For this first stick, it's got button 13, button 13, button 13, all the way down. It has four button 13s. Why, why would we ever do that? That makes perfect sense because let's say we're our first line here, our mixed gear, what we want to do is put in our first gear, one in the main, one in the auxiliary, or one, one. So we move our stick top left, move our other stick top left, that would be one, one. What is this position on your chart 
for me, and this is where it's going to get a little bit confusing. There is a button name. I think for me it said 12 in my example. Let's just say for argument's sake it said button 13. So it says this is the button to have on your first stick, the shifter and the button, and this is the position that you should have for your second shifter base, and upper left is button 9. It's button 9 for me. You have to figure out how yours are. And that's essentially what we're going to be doing is going in and copying this. Uh, I have the code actually for you. Go into the folder that I provided for you and you'll see a document called controls.sii code for the Spicer 44. This is just a document that I'm going to have you copy and paste. So let me go ahead and bring that document over here. Let's get rid of this for a second. And we have our controls.sii file right here. And what I want you to do, notice how it says in the controls file, it says mix gear one, mix gear one. So yours is going to look different than this. It's going to look probably more like this. But what I want you to do is just go ahead and everything in quotes, the quotes included, go ahead, highlight this first line, copy it, and then go into your controls.sii file, highlight everything including the quotes, and hit paste. And when you do, you're going to end up with something like this. Now, my button assignments and my joystick names are going to be different. Use your chart that you filled out to make this correct. So in this case, again, upper, this is button 1 or button 13. It refers to my upper left position on my first stick. And B9 refers to my upper left position on my auxiliary, on my second stick. And the auxiliary shifter is named Joy2. And the initial one, the one closest to my leg, the main, is called Joy. So go ahead and replace these. And see how this makes sense, though. 13, 13, 13, 13. This is simulating being in first gear in the main. But notice how these button changes. Because at this point, you're going to stay in first and you're splitting the first gear four times by moving the auxiliary stick to, from position 9, in this case button 9, which is 1-1. One, 1-2 one. One, would be button 10. That would be in this position. I'm looking at the sticks now. 1-3 would be over here. That's identified as button 14. And then our fourth one, 1-4, one, would be assigned to button 13. So you're going to see sets of four, 13, 13, 13, 13. When I go to two in the main, that is button 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, and then four 18s and then four 17s. This is going through the same pattern. No matter what gear you're in in the main or even in reverse, here's the pattern for your auxiliary. First split, second split, third split, fourth split. So you should see those numbers rotate, and we do. 9, 10, 14, 13. 9, 10, 14, 13. Over and over is what we see this pattern. So that's how you kind of want to have it set up for this Spicer 4-4 setup. Go ahead and fill in these buttons. Do me a favor. Right now, this portion of the code here, this that I'm circling right here, this is extra for the first four gears. Don't worry about it right now. I'll explain it in just a second. But go ahead and fill in everything. You don't need to do anything for this that says semantical gear. Just make sure that it says 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5 through 16 so that it's in order. But you shouldn't have to touch that at all. We're only adjusting the beginning portion here, and then we'll go into this section. So go ahead and fill in all of this to have your button assignments based on the chart that you have already made out. Now, here is the quirk. When I showed you the setting, when I was in the game and I clicked the button to assign it, to assign, um, I think it was the, the shift up function, I was getting all of the different button assignments. I went up to the left and it said it was button 12. 
why did I write button 13? Now, for me, what I found when I got done with this and I tested everything was I was getting the correct output because I went into the game, went into the truck, and I kept the box open that showed me what gear I was in. And what was happening was I would put it in 2-2 two, two, and what it actually read was this is gear 1-1 one, one, or this was gear 3-3. Three, three. I can't remember which one, but it was consistent. It was consistently off by one number. And through a little bit of trial and error, what I found that worked for me, this may be the same thing for you, is look at your button assignments. And if for the upper left-hand corner where we're assigning 1-1, one, one, if on your chart it says 12, simply add one number to it and it becomes 13. I did the same thing over here. When I looked at my chart, when I looked at my chart for my auxiliary, this one up here actually said that this was button eight. You know where my stick is right now? It said it was eight. So all I have to do is add one to it and it became button nine. That's what worked for me. Maybe for you, you can put in the exact button allocations as they appear on this chart that you filled out. But for me, if this was button 12, I put 13 into the code. Now the second position, which is two in the main, that would normally be button assignment 13 for me. That's gonna come on these lines where it says, so it, it assigned it to me as button 13. I had to add one number to make it 14 to make the code work. And then this is the same, 9, 10, 14, 13. That repeats. So just to be clear, whatever your chart says, you may have to add one number for the buttons. Do not change the joy names. If it says joy 3 or joy 2, leave that the way it is. Just add one number to your button and you should be good. Now the last little bit that we need to cover this portion right here that I'm circling, this is the easy part. But notice there are mixed gear one through 16. How many gears do you have in a Spicer 4.4 that we're setting up? Four times four, you have 16 different gears, forward gears. We've used up every one of these spots just for our forward gears. And I know what you're thinking, just add mixed gear 17, 18, 19, and 20 to get our four reverse gears. It doesn't work like that. There is a limitation in the game that only allows for the game to recognize up to 16 mixed gears. So how do we get our reverse ones? That's what this part of the code right here is for. Basically what we're doing is we've given them the idea, we're, this is one one, one, two, one, three, and one, four right here, these four blocks. So what we're saying here is if we're in forward gears, just look for these button assignments on these joysticks. This little vertical line in ATS means or. We're saying if it's this or it's this, and we're gonna tell it to do two different things. This is the code that will overwrite the are forward gears in first main and make them reverse. So notice how it says joy three. For me, joy three is referring to my shifter knob. And specifically, we're talking about button two. Now, if we go back to our chart, when I put this in for the range, I said this is joy three for the range and button one. So we go back into the code. Joy three, and because it's a button assignment, I add one number to it. It said the range is button one, I'm calling it button two. So that is what I want on my first stick. All this here on the left, first stick. This stuff where it says joy two, that's my second stick. Notice how buttons nine, 10, 14, and 13 are exactly the same as nine, 
10, 14, and 13 here. If the shift pattern doesn't change for the auxiliary, whether you're in forward gears or reverse, the key thing here is in order to use my range knob, my range selector, that is Joy 3. That's the USB device that's recognized. And manipulating the range selector up or down is button it was assigned to me as button one. I add one and it becomes button two. Essentially what we're doing here is we're saying if our range selector is down and it should be down for all of these forward gears. If I move my main stick to one and my auxiliary to one, I am in one one or one two or one three or one four. But since I want my reverse gears, I'm creating a condition within this code. And I'm saying, yeah, but if my range selector is up and I move my auxiliary to first, I am in reverse one, reverse two, reverse three, reverse four. And I don't come out of reverse until I move the range selector back down again. Now I can be in my forward gears. So we're telling it if it's in this position and my, if it's in this position, one, one, and the splitter, or sorry, the range selector is down, we are in one, one, a forward gear, or we're in one, two, or one, three, or one, four. But if at any time I have my range selector up, that's joy three and my, uh, and button two for my range selector, you need to call these reverse gears. It's actually doesn't, it's not assigning in this, in this particular one that that is a reverse gear. It is basically saying there are two different positions. You can operate these in forward gears by having the range selector down, or there is going to be a condition that we assign later. Actually, I'm assigning it for you. You're not going to have to do it. Where if the range is up, it's saying you are in reverse gears. That's basically how we bypass the limitation in American Truck Simulator of only offering up to 16 mixed gears. I really wish they would change this and expand it because you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to build out a, an authentic twin stick pattern where all you're doing is shifting the sticks. You shouldn't have to rely on splitters and range selectors and any of that. The real sticks are just two sticks and you move them into all positions. So if I was going to do a six, four, six in the main, uh, six in the main four in the auxiliary, that would be 24 forward gears plus four reverse. Remember, however many you have in your auxiliary is also however many you have in reverse. So you would need a total of 28 allocations, and then you can do an authentic one. I wish ATS would change this. Right now, it's only accepts up to mix gear 16. So we've added this additional thing for our first four gears. You can, you can attach them to the second set of four, or the third set of four, or the last set of four if you want. I just did it up here. So that is how we're giving it two different conditions. Once your button assignments are done, remember these should all have the same name. Your button, your first, these should appear in groups of four, button 13, button 14, whatever those button assignments are on your chart that you filled out. These should all be the same because this is your second shifter, joy two, joy two, joy two, all the way down here. Um, and these should repeat in cycles of four, 9, 10, 14, 13, 9, 10, 14, 13, whatever yours are on your chart. Once you have all of this figured out, remember to save it, control S. After that, you are done with this file. Go ahead and close it. Okay, so the next step is we need to get our transmission in. Within the folder that I had you download, there is a file called link to probably should have completed that name, 
but it is a, in fact, I'm going to do that right now so that when you see this, you'll actually have a full name. Link to, link to, link to, let me change that. <laughs> link to Spicer DIY mod on SCS forum. There is a mod that I want you to download. It is free. It is on the SCS forum and it is called, let's go ahead and change this now. Spicer DIY mod. Here is the link to it. You can go ahead and click on it. You'll have instructions on the page of what to do with this, how to install this, but I'm gonna walk you through it too. So essentially you need three files, the controls.sii file, which we already took care of. You need to have a proper transmission file, specifically one that has the same number of gears that you're using, in this case, 16 forward gears and four reverse gears. And then you'll need a third item. It's the gearbox layout file, which we'll get to in just a second. But these next steps are very straightforward. Go ahead and navigate to the link, download the Spicer DIY mod. Again, it's free and put it in your mod folder, American truck simulator mod. Make sure you drop it into your mod folder. It's just a one click. You don't have to extract anything. Just bring it straight in and you're good to go. Once it's in there, we need to make sure that we match up our truck name with the transmission. And this is how we do that. This is, it's basically going to be the same style. Um, the mod is called, let's, let's repeat this first step that I did earlier in the video. And let's say we're going to go with the, and we'll make it the same, the Peterbilt 359. I'm going to go to the open def. I'm going to go def vehicle truck, that same pattern that we did before highlight this and I'm going to copy this. That is the truck name, peterbuilt.flx. I have to assign that name to the transmission in order for my truck to have those available transmissions. You do the same thing for engines, by the way. So we'll go into the mod. It's called Spicer DIY. I'm sure there it is. And in order to get to it, same, same method, def vehicle truck. What you see here, Peterbilt FLX, it's already in here. But if it wasn't, these are all folders for trucks that have these, have all the transmissions assigned. Check this out. If I go into the Kenworth.needlenose, which is Blueprint Mods uh, Kenworth 521, and we enter transmission, we have a list of, I believe it's 29 transmissions. So if we go back, I also have all of those available in the Peterbilt 389. Same thing. Whatever additional folders you have with truck names, all of those transmissions will be assigned to that truck. So let's go ahead and start and we'll, I'll do an example and add another truck that I haven't already added. Let's pick the uh, Freightliner Powerliner. This is uh, Rush Hour 109. I've got the key file here. I, maybe, can I do it here? No, I don't have access. I do have a skin pack here from Richard Brown. No, that's the wrong one. Ah, here we go. Powerliner skin pack. So let me go in. This is still going to be related and it's still going to be able to give us the def file of the Freightliner Powerliner. Def, vehicle, truck, and it's called Powerliner. That is the name of the truck. I'm going to copy that name right now. Then I can close this. I'll go back into the Spicer DIY mod and I'm going to add it. I want each one of these folders have all the transmissions. I'm going to just go ahead and pick one of these and I'm going to copy it to the desktop. What I've done is it's still in here, but I've made a copy to my desktop. I'm going to highlight the name and I'm going to paste in the truck name, Powerliner, hit enter, and then we can see it's got all these transmissions in it just like the other ones. So we have all these transmissions just like this. Last thing we need to do, take this folder, drop it in either on the right or on the bottom. Make sure you're just not putting it in to another folder. Put that in, hit OK, and there you go. Now. The, Freight Later, the Freightliner Powerliner has all of these transmissions assigned to them. 
if there are any issues with these transmissions not showing up when you go into the shop and pick your transmission, the only other thing that you would want to do is go in and use one of these. There's uh, actually, these four are the ones we're going to be dealing with today. They have the number 16 in them because you have 16 forward gears in a 4.4. You would go into them and... Remember, I copied this from this other truck. You may need to put your truck name in here. So this was set up for the Peterbilt 389. I'm going to remove that and hit paste again because I still have the word Powerliner. That's the truck name. And I have assigned it to the top of this specific transmission. Here's the key if you're going to do this. Pro tip. So hit save, uh, control S. And it's going to prompt you, while this thing is still open, hit yes. Then that will make the change. So if you're running into problems where you've assigned your truck name and you don't see the transmissions, go into the transmissions, find the one you want. And this one you can identify. It's This is definitely one that we can use. We needed four reverse gears and we needed 16 forward gears. Obviously, it starts at zero for both. So we're good to go. This is a file we can use. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then just go ahead and enter the same truck name right here that you did when you originally came in here and copied the file, uh, renamed it, and then moved it back in. So you may need it in both sections. Um, I started doing that at first, and I found the last truck that I did all I did was I created an, I created a copy, renamed it, and dragged it back in here. I think that was actually for the FLX. And I, when I open up the FLX, I have access to all six, or all twenty-nine of these engines. So you may not need to go into that second step of opening the file, and of opening the file and renaming it to that. It may work by itself, but if it doesn't, take that extra step. This is, by the way, the name of the folder, if we look at it. This is 85165B. Leave that alone and leave the word transmission alone. Between these two dots goes your truck name. That's it. Let's go into the folder of the resources that I told you to download. The last thing that we're going to need to do before we go into the game settings is... We're going to need to look at the gearbox layout file. Actually, you don't even need to open it, to be honest. But we are going to put this gearbox layout file into our profile. So if we go back to American Truck Simulator, and we go to Profiles, this last one, because it's arranged by date, that's the one we were working with. And I need you to take that file... Take this file that says Gearbox Layout, Spicer 4.4, and move it into this profile, right? So American Truck Simulator, Profiles, select the profile, and then drag this one over to here, or copy and paste. As you see, I already have it right there, Gearbox Layout, Spicer 4.4. The Gearbox Layout file we'll get into in other videos when we customize it. But in short, once you go into the game and you go into the control settings, you know how you pick whether you're going to drive a 10 speed or a 13 or an 18 from that drop down? This throws the Spicer 16 speed into that list that you can select. And it's absolutely key. Otherwise, you can shift completely accurate to the real thing, but, nothing, but it won't reflect as the proper gears. So you need that gearbox layout file. So... At this point, you should have the following things. You should have the gearbox layout file in your profile. That's what we just did. You should also have the Spicer DIY mod in your mod folder and have the truck name assigned so that when you go to um, build or edit that truck in the shop, those transmissions are available. The last thing that you should have was actually our first step, the S the controls.sii file that should all be good your button assignments your shifter bases you should be go be good to go you've altered that and saved it 
make sure you saved it. Now we are done with everything outside of the game. Now we go into the game. Pick the profile that you're in if, you, if you've gone to another one in the meantime. <clears throat> I'm still in the one that I made changes to, so I know I'm in the right profile. Before I go to continue game, go to the mod manager. Remember, we downloaded the Spicer DIY mod. You've added it to your mods folder. Now make sure that it is active. I'll just do a search for Spicer. For you, it'll show up in the top left. And then double click to activate it and put it accordingly. What I usually do, and you don't have to do it, I put most of my transmission stuff right below my engines. And that works for me. Whatever works for you as well. So once you have activated that, click on Confirm Changes down below. And once you are done with that, you can go in and continue game where we'll make just a few more settings. We only have two more steps, then we're done. All right, we are in the game in this profile. First thing we need to do, remember that Gearbox layout file that I had you copy over? This is what it does. If we go into Options and we go into Controls, Make sure you're selected as H shifter. That doesn't change. But down here, this is where you would normally see Eaton Fuller 10 speed, Eaton Fuller 13 speed, Eaton Fuller 18 speeds. That's what came default with the game. Obviously, I have quite a few more transmissions that I have in here single stick and double stick. If you've put that into the right place, into the proper profile that you're in right now, this drop down will reveal Spicer 16 speeds. That's what you need. That's your 4x4. Four four. So once that is done, you should be just about queued up. The last thing that you need to do, you actually need to go in and assign it to the truck in the shop. So let's go in to Truck Manager because I've already got my truck built. Let me go into the 359. And I want to upgrade it. This is the 359 by FLX. I'm going to go ahead and update it. If your truck is live, make sure you go to a garage. And I'm going to go to the transmission section. And I'm going to select. So right now, this is actually set up for a Spicer 5.3. That's why it's a 15 speed. But if I type in 16, I have a bunch of different options. Let me see here. This is the Spicer DIY. Spicer DIY, Spicer DIY. So all five of these options right here are 16 speeds. They have four reverse and they have 16 forward. The only difference is the ratio of this initial gear. For here it's 10.45, 15.67, 8.17, 14.52. So it's a different initial gear and all of these have the same differential. By the way, on the transmission sheet, the, uh, when we were going in there and renaming the top of it with the truck name, you can also change the differential in there to something else. In general, if you don't know, the higher the number is for your initial gear and for your differential, the more torque you're going to have, easier to get off the line, especially with a heavy load, but the slower overall that you're going to go. So if you're hauling heavy, if you're doing a lot of hills, you're probably going to want this number to be 15 or 14, these numbers here, 10 and 8, those are more like highway setups. If what you're going to be running is just on the pavement, not a lot of hills, not even a heavy load, the lower this number is and the differential, you're going to have a little less torque to begin with, but that's okay if, it's not, if you're not on hills and not having a heavy load. You will be able to go faster overall. So it's more for like highway driving. And something in the middle like 12 is a good compromise. Actually, 3.55 is a very good compromise. If you're going up to like in the fours, you're set up for heavy haul. A lot of torque, low speed. If your differential is like 2.8, you're clearly set up for highway to go faster. So once you have selected this, go ahead and hit confirm order. And you are good to go. And you should be all set up now. The only thing that you have to do is just to test it. 
Um, you may have a different route advisor than I do, but if you look at the top in the center, it shows that we're in neutral. I just need to test these somehow, so put up a box anywhere, any box that you have that will show you what gear you're actually in. Please do this with the clutch. If you move it to these positions without the clutch, it'll still read neutral, even if you have the gears correct. So I'm going to move my main upper left and my auxiliary upper left. When I do, that should be 1-1. One, one. And sure enough, that's what it reads at the top of the page. If I move my auxiliary to lower left, that should be 1-2. Lower right, 1-3. Upper right, 1-4. My next gear would be 2-1, so I'll move the main to 2 and reset the auxiliary to 1. And so on. Go through all your gears and make sure that they're actually reading the right way. The other thing that I should do, let me go back to 1-1. One, one. It's reading 1-1 one, one because my range selector is down. What happens if I put my range selector up? Now I've done something with this stick already. Whatever I have it whatever position I put this one in is going to term, determine which reverse I have. Now the way it works, I have to actually reset the second one. So I'm going to take it out of gear and move it forward, back upper left, and it should say reverse one. Good. Reverse two, bottom left. Reverse three, bottom right. Upper right for reverse four. We are good to go. Um, even if I check out gear four, and, oh, I need to be in forward gear, so let me put my range back down. Four in the main, four in the auxiliary, reads 4-4. Four, four. So we are good, and we have verified that everything is working correctly, and we now have a uh, twin stick setup. I just went ahead and tested this um, just to verify that all the instruction that I gave you worked out, so I did it on a new truck, and I assigned it to the uh, Blueprint Mods Kenworth 521. This is the needle nose. Um, and it works. That's the whole process of how you get through and set up all of your twin stick setup. Again, I'll have more tutorials later on where we go into how do we get into these files, manipulate some of the uh, gearbox layout files, how does that change what we do in the controls.sii file, and, and so on, so we can make our own transmissions and shift patterns as we move forward. But I wanna thank you guys for uh, taking the time to sit through this tutorial. If you sat through everything, let me know if you have any questions or comments uh, down below. I read all of them, so I will get back to you with answers as best I can and do any follow-up clarification if necessary. But I'm wishing you guys happy holidays. I've got a few more videos that are coming out um, before the end of the year. But I hope you guys are enjoying yourself. I hope you're spending good time with friends and families. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you can see all of my videos. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.